The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh boy. Now I am a fan of these style of games, as seen by my Dead by Daylight video, so I had to go for this Platinum Trophy. But with Dead by Daylight, I had experience prior to doing the trophies. With this one, well... We have a long list of trophies in this game, so let's just get straight into it by starting with the victims. As a victim, you can choose from numerous survivors which each have their own unique ability. These are Julie, which consumes less stamina and can't be tracked by the Cook or Johnny whilst active. Connie, which is a focus ability, allows you to almost instant unlock doors with a lock pick. Anna, who increases her toughness, she can tank more hits. And Sunny, who has the sonar reading ability, so you can sense noises and small radius around you. And then you have the GOAT. Honestly, this man requires no introduction. You're going to be seeing so much of him throughout this game. Each one of these can be leveled up with XP and give various other benefits, but for now we'll be choosing Julie, as she is the only person who needs her ability to reach level 3 to be able to get a trophy. So going into a game with her, we wait for everyone to lock in and we start our first game. It would probably help if I um looked at the trophies for the game. <laughs> oh, I know, so there's a trophy to get to level 15, and it's the longest grind. Oh, it feels weird aiming the uh, the lockpick with a joystick as opposed to using your mouse. Oh god. So we take that. That is in the basement that we need to go, so... Okay, Leland, do your thing. Protect me. So basically, yeah, what you do is you, you put the water valve on here, the pressure will go up, and then the Leland, being a perfect Leland example, just stabs him in the back before they can stop it. That's what we'll see in a second. Yeah, yeah. So they're so they're just going to literally just stun. They're just gonna keep on stunning the cook. So we'll just get through here, and then we're out. And there's our first trophy. Tread softly. Yeah, they can't really do anything against it. You can't block. You can't do anything unless you get a one shot hit off. So the bubble should have like fully revved up above and smacked to be able to get a one shot hit on us. But of course they didn't. So. On our next game, I did the exactly the same thing and we got another escape. With this win, it allowed us to get the running, jumping, climbing trees trophy and the Lone Star trophy for each in level 5. Next, we are going to be going for the Be Like Sally trophy. For this trophy, you have to jump out of the family house window and exit via the main road. On my first attempt, I actually encountered a swinging Johnny with infinite stamina who had run constantly trying to kill me. So that didn't go so well. Then, we got a game as our main man Leland. Do you know what we can try and do? Should we try and jump out the? Uh, should we try and jump out the front window? Okay, Johnny is still somewhat near. Okay, look how dark you are when you're in shadows. By the way, all right, this is what I'm thinking. Then, I think we're going to get the med kit, and we're going to try and jump out the window when we know that they're somewhat distance away. Let's we'll see. I need help now. <laughs> Let's we'll see. We are doing Sally's exit right now. We jumped out the window. We didn't quite get chased uh, as much as what Sally did. But we're out. Be like Sally. There you go. That's what we're after. Escape down the driveway after jumping out the family front house window. With Leland being the perfect last scale, we attempted going for another harder trophy called Fixer. Fixer requires us to be a handyman, which is fixing the fuse, turning off the generator, and spinning the pressure valve. To do one of these in a game of full family is ridiculously hard already. But what if we had a god that listened to our prayers? Johnny DC'd, that's good. But now we need to try and find where the fuck this valve is. So Johnny. Never face disconnected, it's just the hitchhiker left. Now turn it on, and we're gonna turn it off. Just to make sure that we're the ones that registered it. Okay. Water valve now. I swear. Oh, it's right, it's literally right there, guys. It's right here. Fucking timing. Fixer! There we go! With this escape, I managed to level up Julie to level 10 and then refund all the points for another trophy. 
And in our next games, we got the doing well, which was for escaping down 10 wells, and the shush trophy for making no noise whatsoever and escaping the map. Before I then decided to put my big boy pants on and take the fight to the family. Leland, my boy, it's your time. No. Fuck. Fuck you, ain't going to level one. Get back down to level zero. That's it. Yeah, now it's my turn. There we go. We got it. The fighting back trophy required me to perform three sneak attacks on each of the family members in one game. After that battle, the rest of the trophies that came after were natural with gameplay. And we've only one victim trophy left, I decided it was time to turn the tables. Now we've unlocked the real shit. Alright, because now we've got... Well, they ended up pretty loaded. Much like the victims, the family have their own section of characters with their own abilities. These are Leatherface, who can rev his chainsaw up to be able to get these insta-kills. He's also required to be in each game to start and can destroy obstacles. The Cook, he can hear sounds and highlight victims through walls. He's a wall hacker. Hitchhiker, who can place down bone traps to snare victims. Johnny, who can track footprints, and then finally Sissy, who can blow poisons to make choke holds in places and can also poison objects like health flasks. Since no one likes playing Bubba for whatever reason, I took it upon myself to bring in the big B and protect the basement. Now I'm going to try and see if I can learn how to play Bubba on the fucking controller. Don't let me fool you from that last clip. I wasn't silent there because I wanted you to hear that luxurious schling of the two trophies popping. I was actually silent because I was so salty because I just could not play Bubba successfully. So after a couple more games of practice, getting it under my belt, I decided to then go for the mine, all mine trophy, which is for killing all four victims. Four kills. Four kills is the family. Making grandpa proud. Achieve a perfect family win, killing all victims on each map. Oh. And mine is mine. Execute all four victims in a single match. I then wanted to focus on getting the miscellaneous trophies to each family member out of the way before then focusing on getting the 100 kills and soon reaching Cook to level 3 so we can get that maximum XP grind. So with Bubba done and destroying all the obstacles with him, I moved over to the Cook. For this one we had to spot 10 victims and place 10 locks, which was very easy to do. Then with Johnny we just had to analyse 5 footprints. Hitchhiker we had to catch 5 victims and also get the I'm coming for you trophy which is for going through crawl spaces and going down a ladder and through a little shimmy gap and then for sissy we had to poison two people at once with the same cloud and also poison 15 items whilst playing as each of these characters i made sure to get a kill with all of them for the executioner trophy and then with all of those now out of the way what was left was just more well honestly more luck based trophies than it was skill these last remaining trophies are the trophies that will really rack up your time played for this game and it is all situational and playing into said situation you can boost these trophies in a private lobby, but where's the fun in that? So, these trophies are escaping 100 times, killing 100 people, executing 10 people on the gallows, and finally dragging 10 or 20 people from hiding spaces. The 100 escapes was fine, I came back, rushed the final ones required, 
And as for the 100 victims, I just played as Leatherface and got the kill within 30 seconds as well to get the 100 family kills. Leatherface is by far the best person to get these with, as once you learn his chainsaw attack, it is just god tier. The more troublesome ones were the gallows and the hiding spots. For the hiding spots, no one ever uses these. At the very start of the game when it first released, people hid in them all the time. But much like Hot Lockers and Dead by Daylight, they seem to just be neat. As for the gallows, ah, oh, jeez, this one sucks. To get a Kello kill, you have to have a victim pass out in front of you from too, having too much damage. And then in that time, you need to pick them up only as Leatherface and bring them to a hook on the map that will be highlighted to you. It is so rare this ever happens, and when it does happen, you can just have another family member come and take the kill. It is so frustrating. So I adjusted my Leatherface build to be a bleed build. And then eventually, by some miracle, I managed to get all the 10 of the Gallo kills without having to boost it at all. But my god, this trophy will probably be one of the last trophies you end up achieving. It's fair, give me the trophy, I swear, because the Leland disconnects on the last one I got. <laughs> I'm going to be spurned away otherwise. Yes! I'm up on you. Execute 10 enemy victims in total the Gallo's as level face. Oh, thank fuck for that. All what was left now was to reach level 50, and as soon as you reach level 3, cook, the points just rack up. I mean, just, just look at this gameplay. So, this is one of the ways how I've been grinding XP the best way I can, if not playing as Leatherface, because no one ever wants to play Leatherface. As the cook, and we're a level 3 cook, we can use our ability and it will show uh, Leatherface where people are. So, this is how I rush it, especially Family House, the best one for it. I'll show you how he gets uh, a lot of XP and hopefully we hopefully we can get like a 3000 XP game. Right now I'm trying to rush the blood because what I want to try and do is see if we can get the um I want to see if we can get the level 2 grandpa to make the lock picking harder. It's going to make life really easy for us in the long run. We need people to just continue running. We want we want people to run. Unfortunately it doesn't seem like people are uh, really willing to run continuously it's the people that are being chased where you can get a load of the points from so every time that you spot someone it is 50 points so if someone's being chased and you continuously keep pinging them that is 50 points that you're going to get continuously and it is the best way uh of just racking up xp especially as the cook you can see i have 570 already just for doing like a small amount but it is the best way to to get it as the cook it seems like these guys are very much sprinting and stopping sprinting, so it's very hard for me to get all the pings off. Like that. You can see how my points boom, are going up. So he's currently being chased by the sissy, so it's best for us to just keep on pinging this guy. For as long as the sissy's chasing him, he's going to continue running. That means that we can continue getting pings. It's a win-win. One more game. But look, 3,000 points, and that was only one kill as well. Use a, the cook is the way forward to grind XP. Honestly, it's so much faster than doing any AFK method that people seem to be doing. And also, it doesn't ruin the game for people. So it's a win-win situation. But what I'm going to do now... So she opened up this door. Oh, oh, there you go. It's the end of the game. Totally Texas. Totally Texas for reach player level 50. And then, come on. Forever Texas. Ah, oh, what a dance. Beautiful dance to celebrate the Platinum. There you go. After... 45 hours of playtime is how long it took me to get the platinum and that is with no boosting by the way I honestly thought I was going to have to boost the gallows and I thought I was going to have to boost the um, The hiding spot ones, but honestly some people just like I had this one I mean you saw the clip earlier I had the one person that was just going in the hiding spot and coming out again And I was like, oh, you know what we take these we take these um, and then as for the gallows one I was honestly so close in being like, oh, I might need to boost these trophies. On the on the day that I had for eight hours, I went from having one Gallows kill to well to, to, to the trophy. I ended up getting the trophy. I got nine Gallo kills in one day. And I actually probably would have got more so 12 Gallo kills. But I had some people that DC'd or um, basically other times it wouldn't allow me to pick people up to put them onto the Gallows. And there you have it. Almost 46 hours later, we reached the Platinum for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love this Platinum and just the game in general, and it made me rewatch the entire series again for just appreciation. 
It has a somewhat steep learning curve to begin with, but as soon as you have the hang of things, you'll smash through all the trophies just naturally whilst playing. And if you really get trouble whilst playing it, you can always boost them in private lobbies or you can ask us to help do it for you. Thank you all for making it through the video. I love making this style of content and I hope you enjoy watching it. If so, please make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this and do make sure to check out my other videos as well. That Evil Within one is just phenomenal to watch. So until next time guys, enjoy getting the Platinums and I'll see you in my next video.